As 2023 comes to a close, now seems like the perfect time to look back at the year, kind of reflect on some of the highlights, some of the things that I wanted to do that I wasn't able to, uh, and just kind of catch up with all of you, share where I'm at right now as we head into the new year, and talk about some of the plans that I have for photography in general, but also for the channel. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos where we just kind of catch up, so grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. Early on in the year, I shared a video talking about finally being able to get inside the paper mill. That was one of the highlights of the year for me. I have wanted to get inside the paper mill and shoot some photos for so many years now. To finally be able to do it was just an awesome experience. So many people in Chillicothe have just given their entire lives to working at the paper mill. So to be able to go in there and shoot some photos of the process and the people working in there, uh, if I don't ever get back in there again, which I really hope I do, um, but if I don't, I'm grateful that I at least had that one day to get inside there and make some photos. One thing that has been stretched through the entire year has been working on my book, Surveyor, and getting it ready to be released. My goal for a while has been to get it out by the end of the year. As you watch this video and the date that it's being uploaded, clearly it's not coming out this year. I probably could have released it this year, but I didn't want to rush things just for the sake of an arbitrary deadline. With friend of mine, I had a hard deadline in mind when I wanted to get the book out, and so many factors go into making a book that things that were completely out of my control, it just kept getting pushed back further and further. And I told myself I wasn't going to do that again and that when the book is ready, it will be ready. So I am happy to share that the design of the book has been finalized, the entire layout, the sequencing, all of that is completed. I have the final draft files ready to go and sent to the printer. So production will be starting very soon and I can't wait for that. But we're in the home stretch now. It's just a matter of time for the production of the book. So expect that to be coming out in the very near future for 2024. That's one of the big goals or plans for the new year is to finally get this book out and in people's hands. And I'm just super excited about it. I don't typically cover every new camera release or lens release like a lot of photography channels, but I tend to just focus on cameras and gear that I would actually use myself. And there was actually quite a bit of gear that came out in 2023. We had the Leica M11 monochrome, which I actually used for a while. I'm no longer using it now, but we'll talk a little bit about my camera rotation throughout the year, of course. The Leica Q3 came out with some changes that were just as polarizing as I expected them to be. Uh, the Mint Instant Flex TL70 Plus, a TLR that shoots Instax Square, that also came out, followed by the Polaroid i2, which is my favorite Polaroid camera ever. So for someone who doesn't cover every new camera or lens as they come out from all of these different brands, I was able to check out a few different cameras this year before they came out, so that was a lot of fun. Over the last couple of years, I've said no to pretty much every travel opportunity that came my way. Um, having another baby, moving, getting settled into this house, I was just needed much more here at home. And so I just said no to everything for a while and I kind of got comfortable doing that and sort of uh, became a hermit. But thanks to my lovely wife for encouraging me and pushing me to actually start saying yes to more opportunities, I was able to travel a little bit this year, which was a lot of fun. I had a show in Brooklyn at Brooklyn Film Camera, which was just an incredible experience. Thank you to everybody who came out to the show opening, anybody who has stopped in and actually saw the work after the show opened, everybody at Brooklyn Film Camera for having me. Uh, that was just such a cool experience, something that I'll never forget. And being able to share some of the work from Surveyor ahead of the launch of the book, uh, it was definitely an encouraging part of the process for me. Shortly after that, I went down to Atlanta for film stock with KEH. That was an amazing experience as well. Getting to see friends, old and new, meeting so many people that came out to the events, whether it was the meetup or the photo walk, uh, that was just a highlight of the year by far for me. And then just a few weeks ago, I had another show in Jackson, Ohio at the Marquet. So that was a lot of fun for me because I love the small town feel of Jackson. And I'd done a show there years ago where I shot photos around Jackson and we had them on display at Sixth Sense, the brewery there. So being able to share the work from Surveyor there in Jackson, um, people driving from out of state coming to see the show in such a small town, uh, that was just a really cool experience for me as well. 
Another really cool experience that I just want to say thank you for is uh, being able to do a video with Elliot. Just a couple of days ago, we made a video on the Lego Polaroid camera that Lego sent me. Elliot got to do that video with me and the response to that and everybody reacting to Elliot in the video uh, has just been like the coolest thing. And he's been, you know, seeing all the comments and I've been sharing them with him. Uh, he's just on cloud nine. He stole the show there. It was amazing. Um, so thank you so much to everybody who watched that video. That was probably one of my favorite things of 2023 altogether. But now as we move into 2024, I want to share some of my plans for the new year plans for the channel and ideas that I have, uh, projects, things that I'd like to work on, camera gear that I'm going to be using in the new year, things that I'm using right now as we head into it, things that maybe I wasn't using just a couple of months ago. Uh, we're going to dive into all of that, but before we do that, I want to take a second to pay some bills and thank our sponsor today, Squarespace. When I first created mattdayphoto.com 10 years ago, I did it with Squarespace. This was long before they ever decided to sponsor my channel but I chose Squarespace because it was just a no-brainer. They had everything I needed in one place, and all these years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use while you do it yourself. Drag and drop customization, tons of different templates to choose from, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or even schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website, no need to use a third-party service, and they also have tons of different plugins from third parties to keep everything in one place. Keeping track of your inventory, shipping fulfillment, it's all a breeze with their built-in tools. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial by going to squarespace.com slash mattday. Use the promo code MATTDAY at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so camera gear. Let's start with that. Uh, let's go back to the beginning of this year. At the start of 2023, I was using my Leica M11, and I had been using the camera for about four months, I think, at the start of the year. Used it for another four months, and after eight months of using that camera, converting basically everything to black and white, once the Leica M11 monochrome came out, I figured now is the time to try this out and actually see if I can commit to shooting black and white. So I sold the M11 in order to fund the M11 monochrome, which is what I pretty much always do with these cameras. Loved the M11 monochrome. The files that I got out of that camera were just unreal. Uh, insanely flexible, dynamic range was amazing. And in that time frame, while I was using that camera, I picked up the 35 Sumo Lux, the latest version that has close focusing. I made a video about it. In order to use the close focusing on that lens, you either have to use live view on the back of the camera or use the little EVF attachment, the Visiflex. After using that Visiflex for a while, I felt like I was just kind of forcing the M into being something that it's not. And that started making me think about the SL2 and using something with a much better EVF. And I had really started to miss color at that time. So I ended up jumping back to the SL2. I sold my M11 monochrome in order to fund that camera. So I was back to using the SL2, a system I had used for years in the past. I've always loved that system, so I knew what I was getting into when I bought it. And I think even in the video that I shared about all of that, looking back now, if I'm honest with myself, I think there was a bit of that honeymoon phase kind of affecting my thoughts or at least just my excitement for using that camera again. I was pretty much always adapting that Sumalux lens to the SL2 so that I could use the close focus. And even in that lens, the novelty of being able to focus closer, I think there was a honeymoon phase in that as well, if I'm being totally honest. Over a few months, I think that novelty just slowly started to wear off where it didn't feel as essential to have a lens that could focus that close. You know, I was shooting everything up close when I first got it. And then as time went on, I found myself, you know, taking advantage of that feature less and less. All year long, I had been using my M11 and my M11 monochrome. So my M6 didn't get a whole lot of use, 
but then film stock was coming up. So I thought I obviously want to shoot film for this event. So I decided to bring out the M6. I started shooting with it in the month leading up to the event. Instantly, the M6 was going with me everywhere and using a film camera with the new lenses that have close focusing you really just have to guess on the distance because you don't have live view or an EVF to actually see through the lens. So that extra feature that I paid a lot of money for, I couldn't even take advantage of with the M6. So that led me to swapping out the Sumalux for one of my all time favorite lenses, the 35 Summicron version four. Um, I've talked about this lens in the past. I've used it for years and I had an opportunity to swap that lens out in order to pick this up. So I did that. I took the M6 and this lens to film stock and immediately it was like just coming home. It felt great and uh, using the M6 every day, I was using that SL2 less and less and that honeymoon phase had really started to wear off. The M system, it's just what I love using the most, even despite my eyes not being able to focus quite as quick as I used to, um, I just can't escape it. So naturally, as things come full circle, I have once again returned to the M11. I swapped out the SL2 for the M11. Once again, um, I just cannot escape this camera. So all of that bouncing around from camera to camera throughout the year, uh, knowing what I know now, in hindsight, I probably should have just stuck with the M11, um, but I did. I bounced around, I tried different things out. Was it curiosity? Was it just boredom? I don't really know. Uh, YouTube comments will let me know exactly what it was, but I'm right back where I started with the M11 as we head into the new year. I've also kind of changed up my philosophy on only having one lens. I've always been a 35 guy and I've always said I just want to stick with one lens and I've done that for most of my time using the M6. I've had a 28 and a 50 occasionally here and there, but the 35 has been like 90% of my use with the M6 over the last decade. But lately I've just been more curious about different lenses, different lens designs, and just having options. More options with lenses as opposed to cameras. At the end of the day, the cameras are just boxes with either you know film in it or a sensor. The lens is really gonna dictate how that image comes together. I'm having fun with it, and I wanna share a little bit of the different lenses that I try out, whether it be lenses that I rent from KEH or lenses that I pick up. Um, I just picked up this Voigtlander 50 millimeter F1 1.5. This was like $450. I bought it used and for the price, I figure let's try it out. I'll share what I find here on the channel. And uh, I kind of just want to be open to that, trying out different lenses for the M system leading into 2024 and throughout the year, whether it be on film or digital. Um, I just this is where I'm most home, I think. So you can expect to see different lenses popping up in videos in 2024. I also want to do more interviews and just talk to different photographers that I'm inspired by and just kind of showcase their work and a little bit of their mindset here on the channel. Uh, telling some different photo stories. I want to reach out to different artists and makers, uh, kind of put together videos highlighting what it is that they do, but also shooting photos of the process, photos of the artist, and uh, just kind of telling more stories through the videos. And as I mentioned, the biggest goal is to get this book released and out, which it will be in the near future, and I'm excited for it. Um, but those are just my goals as of right now as we head into the new year. All of this to say, if you have made it through this entire video where I just kind of ramble on, I really appreciate you. I appreciate everyone who has watched the videos this year or any year. Um, I'm grateful that this is what I get to do, that I get to focus full time just on photography and share my love of photography, share where I'm at with photography, and it provides me the opportunity to spend most of my time just being dad and being a husband and uh, always being with my family because I get to do this um, genuinely could not ask for a better life. So all of that is possible to all of you that watch these videos. And I just want you to know I'm truly grateful for that. So I hope you've all had an amazing 2023. I'm grateful for all of you that spent the year with me. Please be safe tonight. It's New Year's Eve. If you're celebrating the new year, please be safe. And I hope you all have an amazing 2024. And I hope to see you all there with me. So that's it for this video. That's it for 2023. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you guys. And I'll see you guys soon. See you next year. <laughs>